Ash Wednesday service, the pastor began his sermon and he wanted to draw everyone's attention, but he had a hard time holding it. You see, he began by saying in a very solemn but loud voice, we are all but dust. Well, a little girl sitting up front in a girlish but shrill voice said to her mother, Mommy, what is butt dust? <laughs> they got it. The first 11 o'clock, right over there. I have waited months to use that. <laughs> All right, we've got to get serious now. Well, friends, the truth is we're all dust. We're all only human, and we live in a fallen world, a world that's full of dangers and problems. We're in danger from acts of crime, accidents, terrorist attacks. Some of us here right now are dealing with family problems, unemployment illnesses of those that we love, even our own health issues. The question is, how do we have unshakable faith to stand strong when things go wrong? Our text is from Matthew, the seventh chapter. I'm going to read that in a few moments, but I want to set the stage for you. You see, these words were spoken by Jesus at the conclusion of the greatest sermon that was ever preached, the Sermon on the Mount. I know you're familiar with, with at least parts of it. it. takes up three chapters in the Gospel of Matthew, 5, 6, and 7. You know, that's the, the sermon where Jesus talks about the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor, blessed are the meek, blessed are those who are persecuted for my name's sake. In this sermon, he teaches us how to pray. He gives us that model prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer. He also interprets God's commandments and he gives us instructions on how to live and how to respond 
how to respond to life's changes and challenges, to temptations as well as opportunities and blessings. Well, in summary of this sermon, Jesus says this, Anyone who listens to my teachings and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the flood waters rise and winds beat against the house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who built a house on sand, when the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Jesus said that when we fail to obey his teaching, when we fail to obey God's will, we're foolish. But with Jesus as our Savior and God's Word, God's Word as our spiritual foundation, we can withstand anything, any problem that life can throw at us. We can, we can withstand anything that the devil can conspire against us. We can even stand, withstand the problems we cause for ourselves. Well, this evening, we're going to look at four promises of unshakable faith based on God's Word. And I hope you'll use the insert. There's some blanks there that hopefully you'll you'll jot in that one word that's missing. The first is that God gives me peace when I'm anxious. Another word for anxious is worried. That solemn message of Ash Wednesday that You heard when the ashes were placed on your head, remember, you are ashes and you are dust and to dust you shall return. Well, those words were overturned overturned by the message of Easter. Listen to how it's recorded in the Gospel of John. What happened on that first Easter evening? On the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Well... On Holy Thursday, just a few days before, the disciples were with Jesus. They shared the Passover meal with him. They had been with him up to that point three years. They'd seen him perform miracles that no other person ever performed. They saw him open the eyes of the blind and cleanse the lepers. They saw him heal the disabled. He even saw him calm the storm on the Lake of Galilee. They saw him restore people to life. They knew, they knew he was special. He was from God. Some suspected he might even be the Son of God. But that same evening, he was betrayed. And men came with torches and Swords and spears and clubs. And they arrested him. And his disciples did nothing. Oh, they they started to make a commotion, but then they fled. They fled. They, they, They weren't there for him after that. Well, you know the story. He was carted off. He was falsely accused and sentenced to die on a Roman cross for sins he never committed. But he willingly went to that cross, not for those... Not not for those crimes he never committed, but he went to the cross to take upon himself our sins, the sins of the world, the sins of those disciples for having deserted him in a time of need. Well, now they're, they're in that same upper room where they'd shared the Passover meal. It's Easter Sunday. Jesus has risen from the dead and he appears to them. And his very first words were, peace be with you. Because he lets them know right from the start, I I love you. I forgive you for what you've done and what you haven't done. And then he shows them the scars in his hands and in his side so that they know he's not only. 
He's not only, he not only has power over the, the living, that he can cure the living and even bring people back, restored into life for a few days or maybe a few years, but he has power over death itself. And they are just overjoyed to see him. Notice that he said twice, peace be with you. He wanted them to have no doubt whatsoever that their worries are now over. He wanted them to know. He wanted them to know that they're forgiven, that they're loved. And that tells you and I that we too are loved. That's why he went to that cross, so that we could have forgiveness. Now it changed those early disciples, as you probably remember, every one of them, with maybe the exception of one, gave their very life for Jesus. But not until they had taken the gospel throughout much of the known world at that time. Well, we're, we're kind of like those disciples, aren't we? Oh, we're with Jesus until something bad happens, and then we take our focus off of him, and we start to get worried. We get anxious. But God's word tells us, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. My friends, no matter what we're facing, if we stop and we think for a few moments what God has done for us, we wouldn't be sitting here tonight if it weren't for him. He has given us life and he sustained us up to this point. Yeah, we can, we can have problems now. But we know what he's done for us. He gave us his son so that we can have forgiveness and eternal life. And as the scripture says, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not along with him graciously give us all things? Among those things is power. That's the second promise. God gives us power when we're weak. Now let's be honest. Sometimes we are weak. Some of us feel like we're pretty strong. Uh, we can handle things. I don't need any help. But there are times when things happen that we just can't handle. They're overpowering. A couple weeks ago I sat at the kitchen table with the wife and the family members of a man who had died the day before, a member of our congregation. We sat there talking, planning the funeral service that would be held a couple days later. And as we're talking, the family would, would tell me, would recount how hard it was for the father, for the husband, what he went through. He had suffered long and hard with cancer. They said how, how it was so difficult to even watch him deteriorate, lose his strength. But he never gave up his faith. He kept going. And then there was, there was the, the wife, the mother. She is, she's doing things that she never thought she'd have to do to care for her husband. She was doing things that he used to do that he could no longer do. There were long days and sleepless nights. Oh, she had some help. But it wasn't enough. She was worn out. But she was still holding strong to her faith. And one of the daughters looked over at me and said, Pastor Chuck, how does anyone deal with this without faith in God? I hope tonight that there's no one here that's dealing with a problem like that without faith we have a great promise we have a great promise to us that God's power is available to us look at what it says although Jesus died on the cross in weakness he now lives by the mighty power of God we too are weak but we live in him and have God's power the same power that rose Jesus from the grave is accessible to us when we go and we ask in faith and trust that he'll give us that power we need, not just to deal with, but to overcome and maybe even be victorious. 
in whatever this world throws at us. Well, God gives us peace when we're anxious and worried. God gives us power when we're weak. And here's the third promise. He gives us protection when we're afraid. Let me ask you something. Is there something that you're afraid of? Hmm? Is there something that you have very little or no control over? You know, there's things like that that depend upon the, the decisions and actions of other people. Today, two police officers were, were murdered. My God, those officers had no control over that. This is something that, that has you concerned, it has you afraid. Not too long ago, we had a terrible blizzard here and some people lost their lives. Homes were, were damaged, some were destroyed. It's things that we don't have very much, if any, control over. Perhaps we're afraid that the company we work for is going to move out of state, move out of the country, and we become unemployed. Maybe we're afraid that the medical treatment that our loved one's receiving or the treatment that we ourselves are receiving won't be successful. Perhaps we love someone so very much and we've tried to convey that love, but we're afraid that, that they're going to leave us. Maybe we could have done more to prevent a, a problem, but now it, it, it's too late and we're afraid of what might happen. Is there something like that that's, that's making you afraid right now? Let's go back to Let's go back to that story Jesus told about building our lives on a solid foundation. Jesus said, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds his house on solid rock. Though, though, listen to that word, though, the rains come in torrents and the floodwaters rise and winds beat against the house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. Did you notice that Jesus said, Though the rains come, though the storms come. He didn't say if, he said though. Because there is no perfect life. There is no problem-free life. You can look around and you can see somebody and you can envy them and say, oh, they must have a wonderful life. They don't have any problems. The longer I live, the more I find that everyone has a problem. If not now, certainly tomorrow. Well... That's why this series isn't called Standing Firm If Things Go Wrong. It's called Standing Strong When Things Go Wrong because we can be guaranteed that things will go wrong in our lives and in the lives of those we love. But if our faith in God is real, we know we're forgiven, we're loved by God, and we can have his peace. We can go to God in prayer. We can receive the power and the protection we need. You know, some folks have this idea that God is some decrepit old man up in the sky that looks down and says, oh, that's a terrible thing. That's not our God. Listen to how, how the psalmist describes God when it comes to overcoming our fears. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He's my shield, the power that saves me. And my place of safety. Friends, we have an awesome God. We have an all-powerful God. There is nothing that he cannot do. There's a saying, let go and let God. Whatever is bothering you tonight, let go of it. Give it to God. Give it to our rock, our fortress, our place of safety. Let him envelop it in his almighty power and protect us. He won't let us down because God has a plan for us. He has a plan for each and every one of us. The scripture said that he has a plan for us. Plans for good, not for evil. Plans to give us a future and a hope. And you may be thinking, well, wait a minute. Yeah, God's got this plan. And you say he knows the future. Then, then why do bad things happen to us? Why do bad things happen to good people? 
They happen to bad people too, but they also happen to good people. And we, we question why. Is that, is that God's will? Well, sometimes it probably is. But many times it's not his will. But we are assured from Scripture that he'll use it for the good. Ultimately, all things work for the good for those who love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. Now, sometimes those hardships that we endure do, do draw us closer to God. They can make us stronger. They can prepare for even greater hardships. They can help us to be prepared and able to help others, to be compassionate towards other people that are having problems. Now, in some cases, we're going to have to wait. We may have to wait a long, long time to see the good that God can bring out of things. We may have to wait till we get to heaven to see. The parents and siblings of children with special needs, we're going to have to wait. The victims of Alzheimer's, cancer, MS, and other dreadful diseases, their families also, they may have to wait to see that good. The families of drive-by shootings, the victims of drunken drivers, the families of those two courageous police officers that were gunned down today, and all the tragedies which we fail to see working for the good. We have the Word of God as our foundation of faith. And the Word tells us that God will bring good out of all. Ultimately, all things work for the good for those who love Him. Meanwhile, meanwhile, we hold on to that, that knowledge that He loves us with an everlasting love. That He loves us. That His Son went to the cross so that we could have forgiveness and eternal life. And meanwhile, meanwhile, we go to him in prayer. We seek his peace, his forgiveness, his power, his protection. But we know that his ultimate plan, his ultimate plan has always been that we will spend eternity with him. And nothing, not even death, nothing in this world can separate us from the love of Christ that love of Christ that ensures that we will indeed live forever. You know, one day, one day Jesus is going to return and those who are, who've died in the faith are going to rise from the grave. Those who are still living are going to be caught up with them. And we're all going to be changed at that time. And these bodies are, that are but dust, these bodies will be made imperishable, immortal bodies that will live forever, perfect bodies. And all things are going to be put right. The Alzheimer's victims will remember all that they've forgotten. The disabled will leap, the blind will see, the deaf will hear. Those with special needs in this world who don't understand all the things that the typical person understands. They'll understand the workings of the universe. They'll converse with the angels. And all whose lives were cut short will begin an eternal life with their Lord and their Savior. Until then, until then, with Jesus and the Word of God as our foundation of faith, we can have an unshakable faith. We can stand strong when things go wrong. And we can stand strong until all things are made right. Amen.